Hi everyone. So for my presentation, I'm just going to do a simple webcast and I'll be talking as if I have a virtual audience. I am here to talk about the School of Open and how K-12 educators can participate in the school by either taking one of our free online courses or starting their own course or project. But before I start, a little bit about me. So my name is Jane Park and I have been with Creative Commons for almost six years now. And in that time, I've worked in the open education space, the open culture space, and have even done some communications management for the organization. Currently, I'm a project manager in CC's education program, and the project that I focus the bulk of my efforts on is the School of Open. You can reach me if you want to follow up after this talk at janepark at creativecommons.org. So the School of Open, the project I manage, is primarily a community of volunteers. They are from all around the world, of all different ages, and have expertise in fields from copyright to scientific data, to preserving our cultural heritage, to open educational resources. The one common thread among all of us is that we are passionate about openness. Open tools like Creative Commons licenses that enable free sharing online, open resources like the free lecture videos available via MIT OpenCourseWare, and open ways or methods of working, such as collaborative peer-run workshops that flip the traditional conference model on its head. Given our common passion, it is no surprise that we have come together for the primary purpose of providing free education opportunities on the meaning, application, and impact of openness in the digital age. We call ourselves a school because we offer online courses, real-world workshops, and training programs. We are the School of Open because through these education opportunities, we explore the practical benefits that open resources, tools, and methods can have for artists, educators, students, scientists, researchers, and other creators. The community, the volunteers who actually facilitate the online courses, create the resources, run the workshops and after-school training programs, is really the heart of the School of Open. But every community needs an organizer, or in our case, several organizers, which is why the School of Open is a joint initiative by two organizations with overlapping missions, the Peer-to-Peer -peer University and Creative Commons. P2PU is an active peer learning platform and community for developing and running free online courses. Volunteers can design courses for peer learning in study groups or facilitation by a subject expert. Creative Commons is a globally focused nonprofit dedicated to making it easier for people to share and build upon the work of others, consistent with the rules of copyright. So while P2PU takes care of the technical side of things, like the course platform and exploring alternatives to certification like badges, Creative Commons coordinates the community side of things. So things like recruitment of new volunteers, supporting course organizers, and connecting the members in its network to work on projects together. So this is a visual of what that looks like. P2PU providing platform support and Creative Commons providing the community coordination. And this is what it looks like with um, our community. So disclaimer, not all of the organizations whose logos are represented here are officially part of the School of Open, but they've contributed something, even if it's just participating in a workshop or promising that they'll run a course in the future. So at this point, you might be asking yourself, well, what do you mean by open? It's such a broad concept. Um, so we'll take a moment to skim this page. I'm sure you've heard of at least one of these phrases or concepts. These are only a sliver of the existing movements out there around openness. And because there are so many movements around openness, um, we understand that open can mean different things to different communities. And part of the School of Open's goal is to address and discuss those differences and educate ourselves at the same time that we are educating others. But we do agree, um, basically, that open, at the very least, means having the freedom to share and remix and redistribute materials and tools. Um, these are also actions that Creative Commons enables through its licenses. And we also believe that open resources contribute to a culture of sharing across all fields 
which leads to progress in research, education, technology, and culture. And we would like more people to know how to take advantage of all this free open stuff that is out there on the web, because not enough people know how to do that. And that's why we started the School of Open. So don't worry if you're still a little bit foggy about what all this is, because I'll be going over the specific courses and programs that we offer so you can get a more concrete flavor of what we do. So here is a School of Open as it exists on the web at theschoolofopen.org. If you scroll down on this page, you will see a full set of online courses that we offer around various open topics. I'll talk about some of them today, and I'll also talk about the real-world workshops and training programs that are not featured on our website because, well, they're in the real world and we're working on a new website um, landing page. So currently, our volunteers are contributing in one of three ways. Uh, the first way is by promoting the School of Open through workshops and events that give people hands-on experiences in teaching and learning about some aspect of Open. The second way is by building and running the online courses that I just showed you. And the third way is by designing and running in-person training programs that teach about open in collaboration with some entity, such as a school or institution. This is p2pu.org, where School of Open sits. P2PU encompasses all types of courses and experimental learning projects. The School of Open is one of their projects focused specifically on the domain of openness. Courses at the School of Open run like any course on P2PU as a whole, which means that courses run on a peer learning model, which is project-based and requires participants to interact and build things with each other. And this is creativecommons.org, which you all uh, probably know uh, pretty well. School of Open fits nicely into our vision of enabling universal access and participation to education, research, and culture. If we want people to use our licenses and legal tools, we'll need to educate people about what they are and how to use them. So enough of the big picture. Now on to the actual courses that we facilitate that is relevant to K-12 education. There are two of them. Uh, they are Copyright for Educators and Creative Commons for K-12 Educators. So Copyright for Educators is a course for educators who want to learn about copyright law in the education context. We offer two versions, one based on U.S. law and one based on Australian law. Educators who are not in either of these regions are free to take the courses, of course. Um, it's just that, you know, the, the teaching is based on the law in that jurisdiction. So the course is taught around practical case studies faced by teachers when using copyrighted material in their day-to-day -day teaching. By answering these practical case scenarios and drafting and discussing the answers in small groups, um, you and other participants will learn what the public domain is, what copyright law protects, what fair use is and other exceptions to copyright law, and what open educational resources are. This course runs for a period of six weeks and is facilitated online according to P2PU's peer learning model. And this is the same version of that course, but based in Australian copyright law. This course equips Australian educators with the copyright knowledge to confidently use copyright material in the classroom. And it also introduces OER and teaches you how to find and adapt free useful resources for your classes. This course runs in a similar fashion around case studies and is facilitated for seven weeks. At the end of this course, you can actually obtain a certificate from the National Copyright Unit of Australia. And participants of both courses have found them very useful. One participant of the Australia Copyright for Educators course said, it gave me a deeper understanding of copyright and the issues related to use of materials in school settings. I also enjoyed meeting and getting to know and work with some new colleagues. Creative Commons for K-12 Educators is another course. And this is for teachers who want to learn how to find and adapt free useful resources for their courses that are under Creative Commons licenses. So this course um, helps educators to learn how to find uh, resources that are open for sharing and remix, how to remix and share those remixes on the web, how to attribute Creative Commons licensed materials, how to CC license their own works, um, and how to ultimately um, come to a better understanding of Creative Commons so that they can explain CC licenses and how they work to their students. 
and this course runs for seven weeks online as well. Uh, so those are the facilitated courses that we offer, but we also offer a whole suite of standalone courses. And what that means is that they are not facilitated and that they and they can be taken anytime by anyone at your own pace. So um, it, there is no facilitator, but the course itself is a series of steps or tasks that you can take to learn the material on your own. So some courses that might be relevant to you as a K-12 educator are Get Creative Commons Savvy, Teach Someone Something with Open Content, Intro to Openness in Education, and Open Detective. Get Creative Commons Savvy, or Get CC Savvy, is a series of four tasks that will take you around 30 minutes to one hour to complete. In a short amount of time, it helps you understand the basics behind Creative Commons licensing and how it interacts with copyright law. Teach Someone Something with Open Content is a fun challenge that you can take by yourself or with a group. It will help you learn how to find and recognize open content, such as public domain and Creative Commons licensed video, images, and websites in the wild. <clears throat> You'll get acquainted with good collections of open content and ways to find them. Intro to Openness in Education is a great modular course that explores the history and impact of openness in education. The main goal of this course is to give you a broad but shallow understanding in the primary areas of work that are going on in the field of open education. Um, and this course was developed by David Wiley, a professor in BYU and a longtime open advocate and leader. <clears throat> open Detective is a short course that you can take to explore the scale of open to non-open content and how to tell the difference between the two. At the end, it asks you to create a piece of media made from only openly licensed materials. So those are pretty much all of the courses we offer that are relevant to K-12 education. Um, I mentioned before that our volunteers are also running training programs in their regions. Two of these that are relevant to K-12 educators are the School of Open Kenya, which is an after-school program for high school students, and Copyright for Librarians in Latin America. So the School of Open Kenya is led by two fantastic volunteers, Cassioka Mutunga and Simeon Oriko. Cassioka is actually an alumna of the high school where School of Open started in Kenya. <clears throat> the School of Open Kenya works with high school students across Kenya who learn how they can benefit from open educational resources on the web. It runs as a series of after-school program, after-school workshops, and at the end of the program, students have become active participants in open culture, creating and sharing videos and other media online under Creative Commons licenses. The pedagogical approach of this program is unique in that the facilitators start with the student's personal goals. So what is it that they want to learn or achieve? And then they use the answers to this question as a basis to demonstrate how the students can access free and open materials that enable them to accomplish these goals. Because these open resources that they find have a direct impact on their personal mis mission, students become immediately receptive to the idea of open culture and they become active participants in remixing and sharing online. So the second program is in development by a number of volunteers in the Latin American region. They are working on a course and workshop program that will help librarians understand the copyright ecosystem in Latin America and the way that open licenses can be used in their everyday activity. They are drawing on some existing open resources on the web, such as the Berkman Center's Copyright for Librarians Handbook. The face-to-face -face course will be run with librarians from three regions, Colombia, Uruguay, and El Salvador, and the final product will be an online course that can also be part of the School of Open. In Latin America, an increasing number of librarians are showing interest and willingness to learn and understand the legal framework of how copyright works in their regions and the opportunities that open access to knowledge brings to their field. Um, in general, libraries seek balance when it comes to their mission, especially regarding rights related to education and culture and access to information. And so this course and workshop program is attempting to address all of that. 
So the third way that our volunteers are contributing are workshops. They run real-world workshops. And here are two, um, one past and one upcoming that may be of interest. So to celebrate the official launch of the School of Open back in March of this year, volunteers in Berlin, Germany, ran a workshop to create German language courses on open educational resources. This workshop was organized jointly by Wikimedia and Creative Commons volunteers, and it ran for a full day. And the result of the workshop was the beginning of three German language courses, which I won't try to pronounce in German here, but the English translation reads something like, learn how to upload uh, images to Wikimedia Commons. In this course, you will learn how easy it is to upload content on Wikimedia Commons and thus complement the large database of free images. And another course was uh, free learning materials in schools, OER for teachers. This course will teach you the importance of open educational resources and the freedom of teaching and learning materials. So that was a result of that workshop. And many other workshops have been run that have resulted in either a course or some kind of activity or project. An upcoming workshop that may be of interest to you if you're in London on October 24th is um, Hit the Roadmap, a human timeline of the open education space. So volunteers with Creative Commons, P2P, the Open Knowledge Foundation, and the Floss Manuals Foundation are inviting you to come um, together with them for a fun evening to connect with each other and to start building an open education timeline of the key events and persons that have contributed to the movement. The resulting timeline will be featured in the Open Education Handbook that is being coordinated by the Open Knowledge Foundation. Uh, but this event is being purposefully kept flexible in case people don't want to create a timeline but want to work on some other kind of interesting collaboration. So those are the, uh, the workshops that are relevant to open education. Uh, we have even more going on in relation to K-12 education um, in 2014. So we will continue to facilitate courses on copyright for educators and creative commons for K-12 educators. We'll probably have three rounds of uh, those courses. Uh, we'll be developing four new courses in Spanish copyright for librarians, teaching with open textbooks, intro to openness in education, how to create an open collaborative textbook. Uh, regarding training programs, the School, of open, the School of Open Kenya program will continue um, and it will expand its reach to surrounding regions. So it's already ran workshops in Senegal and Uganda. Volunteers in South Africa will develop course modules for kids on Creative Commons that will be integrated into a K-12 school district-wide learning platform. Volunteers in China have already run and plan to run another summer camp for kids on open educational resources. And volunteers in Argentina are developing a copyright handbook for teachers based on Argentinian law. So that's all the stuff that's going on at the School of Open. You can see it's a lot. Um, we, we want you to join us in our activities, and here's how you can get involved. If you want to take one of our free online courses, go to schoolofopen.org and sign up for our announcements list. Once you're signed up, we'll send you a notification when the next round of facilitated courses is open for sign up, um, likely in February or March 2014. But of course, before then, you are free to take any of our standalone courses at any time. They are also available at the website. If you are interested in joining our community, um, please join the Google group and introduce yourself. If you're further interested in starting a course or project in your region, post your idea about it to the Google group. Links to both the Google group and the announcements list are both at schoolofopen.org. Please keep in mind that the open project you may want to start doesn't have to be limited to these three options, workshop, online course or training program. If you have an idea that you think is great, please raise it. You never know who else might be interested in working on it with you. In the spirit of openness, this presentation is licensed under a Creative Commons attribution license. Um, that means you're free to do anything you like with it as long as you attribute Creative Commons with a link to creativecommons.org. And in the spirit of Creative Commons, these are the credits for the images and slides I used by third parties in this talk shared freely under Creative Commons licenses. I didn't have to seek permission because permission was already granted.